So to that end, I want to talk about vaccine requirements because this is a, this is an issue where the, the right answer is not obvious to me. Um, like under what circumstances you should require someone to be vaccinated. Cause so it seems there, there are two separate rationales for requiring someone to get vaccinated in order to, you know, say have access to, to their job or some kind of public space. One would be a paternalist rationale, which is it's better for, for you to be vaccinated for your own sake. And we're going to apply pressure to you to be vaccinated by saying that you can't come in this restaurant or, or you can't come into work. And then the second separate re, uh, uh, rationale for a vaccine requirement would be, you know, the, the, the rationale behind, you know, secondhand smoke, you know, preventing secondhand smoke and, you know, the, the right to swing my fist ends at your face, which is, it's not just for yourself that you're getting vaccinated. It's for the people around you. And I, I have a question about this second rationale, which is whether it really works in practice because yeah, it, it all depends on the actual, the actual facts of the matter about the virus and vaccination. So I'm, I'm fully vaccinated. I assume you're fully vaccinated. Yes, of course. We know that both of us can still get COVID, but we're, we're less likely to contract it because we're vaccinated and having contracted, given that we contract it, we are much less likely to have severe symptoms, require hospitalization or die as a result of it. Correct. So the question is. And less likely to transmit it. And, and, and less likely to transmit it. Okay. So that, so that's the key. That's the key. That's really, that's the crux of my question is if I'm in a cafe with 10 other people, does the fact that those 10 people are vaccinated have implications for me as a fully vaccinated person? Yes. You benefit numerous ways from that, including the fact that it's no joke to get a breakthrough infection anyway. Even though we're infect, even though we're vaccinated, we don't wish to be infected. I'd rather avoid that if I can. So, for example, I still, if I go to public places indoors, I still wear a mask even though I'm vaccinated because the vaccine is good but not perfect. So, other people being vaccinated is another layer of protection for me, which is good. But see, it's not just about the externalities, the, you know, the secondhand smoke or your swinging your hand, your right to swing your hand ends at my, at my face and so on. It's also other ways in which failure to be vaccinated harms other people. For instance, people who fail to get vaccinated and become infected fill up our hospitals and deprive access to beds of other people with heart disease and cancer and surgery. We've had many we have a lot of statistical evidence about this, but also many anecdotes that have hit the news. So the reason the state might require you to be vaccinated is not just about of a paternalistic concern for your well-being, which is the least defensible reason, as you've indicated, mm -hmm. not just out of the direct externality, which is we want you to be vaccinated so that you don't spread the disease to others, just like secondhand smoke. You don't have a right to smoke indoors and impose um, you know, to secondhand smoke on me. But also because when you fail to get vaccinated, you, there's another type of consequence you impose on the rest of us, which is that if you do get sick, because we're not going to deny you access to hospitals, I'm assuming, uh, you fill up a bed that you are now occupying that could have gone to someone who, um, but for your irresponsible actions, now is being denied access to our healthcare system. So there are many reasons to uh, justify this. Now, I need to set, st stress that I... I think we should have a kind of um, light force applied, not a heavy handed force. So I think if you truly are willing to withdraw from society, you know, work at home, be a hunter or a cabinet maker or a psychologist who sees patients remotely or a writer, there are all kinds of things you can do, if many people can do from home or otherwise limit their interactions with society, then I think, you know, okay, we'll let you, we'll, we'll reluctantly honor that desire 
because we're a plural society and we have to tolerate some people who have beliefs we don't necessarily agree with, even beliefs that harm us potentially. But on the other hand, if you wish to participate in society, for many important activities, we're going to require you to be vaccinated. If you want to fly, if you want to go to school, uh, if you wish to work at certain workplaces, you don't have the right to come to my workplace and infect me. Or if I'm a business owner, it's bad for my business if, uh, if there's an outbreak at my business, if, especially in the hospitality industry. If there's an outbreak on a cruise ship or in a restaurant or in an airplane, this would have serious consequences for those firms. And they have every right to say, no, we're, we're private industry and we require vaccination or of our employees and of our customers. So, you know, I, I don't see that as out of step with uh, American political traditions. I don't see it as morally incoherent. And it's certainly not, it's, it is certainly epidemiologically rational. So from a public health, political and moral point of view, I think widespread vaccine mandates are eminently sensible. But I would not, you know, make them 100%. You know, like if someone really doesn't want to do it and is willing to pay the price of their conscience, you can't, have your, your conscience cannot impose costs on me, but if you have a conscientious objection to getting a vaccine and are wish and can want to bear the consequences of that decision, then I, I think we should allow you to do that, even though it does impose a little extra risk on the rest of us. You know, I think we all kind of have to tolerate some risk because, for example, gun ownership, you know, like I am against the private ownership of weapons, but I recognize I have a minority viewpoint and I have to tolerate that living in a free society where we allow people to own firearms. And I, you know, I can't impose my will on other people. And so I have to tolerate that. Um, you know, so maybe we have to tolerate some people who, you know, don't want to be vaccinated. And, and I guess it's, it's also worth reminding people what the status quo was on vaccinations before COVID-19, which is that most in, in pretty much every state, your, tr your children are required to be vac vaccinated in order to have access to public schools. And in some states, right. Yeah. Many workplaces. Or, yeah. As a healthcare worker, I had to prove vaccination for, for everything. Hepatitis A, hepatitis right. B, influenza. I had to sh provide TB tests. Uh, for colleges, you have to have meningitis shots. You know, for young adults in the military, there are mandatory vaccinations. Immigrants have to get like 20 or 30 different vaccines are required if you want to be a legal immigrant to our country. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's very normal. These are exceedingly safe uh, substances, and it's very, very normal. I'm very worried, and there was some evidence I saw today online that the polarization with respect to vaccination for coronavirus is now spreading to other vaccines. Maybe one of the awful legacies of the pandemic will be that the red states will no longer require vaccination for kids to go to school. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see a return of measles, mumps, and rubella outbreaks in, in, in children in, in red states, which is just really regressive, right? I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, take your politics somewhere else, right? You don't need to politicize vaccination. You know, you can politicize other things. Um, so, yeah, I'm very worried that this anti-vax sentiment is going to spread. We had a core group on the far left that was anti-vax, even in the status quo, um, you know, status ex ante, what is it, status quo ex ante, as to say before coronavirus, as you were about to say, every vaccination was required for many, many things. There was a core group of people who opposed it. We tolerated some of them, right? Like we had personal belief exemptions. We had religious exemptions, which we although, although not, not, not even every state has those. I mean, those vary by state. Well, they've been yeah. because those came to be abused over the last 10 or 15 years mm -hmm. where people could just flippantly say, I don't want my kids to be vaccinated. And that counted mm -hmm. those those PBEs, personal belief exemptions have been greatly restricted progressively. Most state, I think probably all of them still allowed religious objections, which had to be bona fide, by the way. Um, and again, that's an argument that is the same pattern of gun ownership and tolerating. You know, we tolerate like. I might not want to allow that. I might say your religion has got nothing to do with, you know, we're not going to permit that. You, you, you know, in our society, we're a, a secular society. We, we are not, uh, you know, a, 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 a theocracy. Uh, we don't have a state religion. And so I'm sorry, you know, your religion is not an adequate excuse for 
not being vaccinated. But no, we don't do that. We say, you know, we're going to tolerate some of that um, because we're free society, admirably. So, so, uh, so you're right. We had a small fraction, mostly on the far left, of people who were opposed. But now we have a large group on the far right. And I am really worried that this is going to lead to a subversion of a commitment to vaccination across a host of other vaccines as well, and ultimately lead to many deaths um, as a result, and many economic consequences. It's very hard to um, run schools, uh, and therefore parents will, you know, if there are outbreaks of measles in southern states in three years because the measles vaccination rate has dropped below 96%, and it doesn't take much, by the time you get to 94, 92% measles vaccination, you're going to have measles outbreaks, just like in Disney World, in California, five or six years ago, there were those measles outbreaks, which closed the park, which cost hundreds of millions of dollars, which people will lose their jobs. They're, you know, this is going to have big economic consequences, which I hope people will see rationally and therefore make sensible choices.